Welcome back to Patrick's Review. In this episode, LA Crackdown. Hi there, welcome back to your Patrick's Review. I'm your host, Milo Sipka, and join me as I take you on a wild ride to the world of science fiction action and horror, all from a personal DVD collection of about 1200 DVDs, plus a few Blu rays, videotapes, TV shows, and video games. Now, in this episode, we look at the film LA Crackdown, which is one of the films from City Lights, Home and Video, the predecessor to PM Entertainment, which was a company that was known throughout the 1990s for their awesome, uh, cheap but uh, high energy action films. Now, this particular film was released as part of the movie Marathon 10 film box set from Flashback Entertainment during the early 2000s. But the disc was also released with its sequel, as you can see, it's also from Flashback Entertainment. And so basically, it's easy to get get it. <laughs> anyway. Now, during the now the film was directed by Joseph Murray, one of the producers of PM Entertainment, in the, in 1987, but was released in 1989. Now, now during the late 1980s, the director video market was just starting to appear, mainly in releasing ultra cheap films that were too financially damaged or threadbare to see a theatrical release. It wasn't until around 1992 when the direct video market finally found its feet, mainly at the time when PM Entertainment, a company that was founded by filmmakers Justin Murray and Richard Pepin, out of the former studio of City Lights, which was essentially a dry run for the low budget but extremely high energy action B graders that PM specialized in putting out during the course of the 1990s, finally got its footing by a twist of fate when the film's CIA codename Alexa, which I'll review in the future, became a surprise cult hit on video shelves and cable TV stations. Thanks to O.J. Simpson, who started the film get, going on trial for the murder of his wife and her friend. By the time 1993 rolled around, the director video market essentially belonged to the likes of PM, New Image, which was a company that was formed by some former Canon associates, Royal Oaks Entertainment, and some other minor B studios. L.A. Crackdown was one of the C Lights films, made in 1987 by Justin Murray, who directed, wrote the script for, and even acted in it. He plays the part of Speed, the drug dealer who does a very violent death being gunned down by cops after he shoots their four police officers. Mary would later direct quite a few of his PM films, but this was about the point during the City Lights days when he was still trying to find skills and soul. Also notable for is that, uh, that his partner Richard Pepin shot and edited the film. Pepin also becoming director during the PM era of his awesome sci-fi B actions to have a better handle on technical film things than Mary's films ever did. The film doesn't have much of a profile out there, at the time of this review, I could only find a couple of reviews on the IMDb's user comment section, and only two reviews on other websites, which is pretty strange considering PM's stature in the director video B action genre. The film is not exactly an action thriller that those who have seen it claimed it to be, but rather an ultra low budget police drama thriller that has only a couple of action scenes, and mostly just drama about a female cop who deals with a couple of female runaways, and has to face the fact that some people just don't want to be saved. Now for the story. The LAPD mounts a raid on a drug dealer by setting up a decoy deal, but the thing quickly goes sideways when one of the dealer's goons makes the police car watching the meat, and the dealer, a complete scuzzball named Speed, That's not the liquor, right? sure. not the liquor, right? an act uh, played by director Justin Murray, shoots dead the two undercover cops and takes out two more cops when they break into the joint. Speed goes down about six rounds to the chest, and his girlfriend, a 16-year-old runaway named Angie Blake, is taken into custody. Karen Shore, a female officer who also works for a community organization that helps young criminals get back on their feet, decides to take in Angie as a candidate for a program to help her kick her habit and also to get her to reveal the names of Speed's associates, as well as taking in another runaway, Fiona Washington, who was an aspiring actress caught during a raid on a porn shoot. She's also 16, therefore underage. Both girls are set up in Karen's home where her shrink husband is then caught sleeping with Fiona after a couple of nights in there. After splitting up with her hubby, Karen realizes that these two girls don't really have any hope in hell for getting off the junk. And after Angie and Fiona leave the house and fatally overdose within days of each other, Karen goes after the deal who supplied them with vengeance on her mind. Now, LA Crackdown isn't really a very good movie. On the technical front, it's quite crude, with a slight hiss in the soundtrack, choppy editing, and not much in the way of style. Of course, at this point, Mary and Pepin were just beginning to form their skills and style, so this can be forgiven somewhat. But the story did have some decent legs to it, and the actors do give it a good try. Special mention must be made to lead actress Pamela Dixon, who sadly never made it into a great acting career. Just about all the films she made were entirely within the confines of Sea Lights PM Entertainment, but easy, easily the from films one ace in the whole. Her tough love personality is quite good to see, and the way she reacts to the story's turns, 
does have some conviction. Although she isn't exactly 100% convincing her role, more like 87%. <laughs> the action scenes are not very well handled, with the shootouts being a particular source of sight pain, having the cops fire each round at least two seconds apart, and just staying stiff while they're firing their guns. Not to mention the flat staging Mary does here. We have something of an overuse in slow motion during said action scenes. But the film works best as an authentic time capsule on the late 1980s. Anyone who lived through during that time, like me for example, or if I was living in Eastern Europe at the time this was released, will recognize the way people went about their business. There is a reason why the 1980s are remembered so fondly by movie fans, and for that alone, LA Crackdown is pretty much worth a watch. But only for that reason, and also for those who are PM fans. Aside from that, this was a pretty average, cheapy thriller that doesn't serve any other purpose other than what I listed. Now, LA Crackdown goes by with a C. 4 out of 10 rating, average stuff to be sure. Now there's no gore, but for drug dealers get shot down with some large bullet scripts going off in their bodies, that's about it really. And as for nudity, at least 7 women, either strippers or porn actresses, show off their bodies, and then it's only breasts. Breast men will enjoy this one, but for the boobs seeing here don't look too flashy. Now the DVD, the quality of the DVD is yeah, passable. And of course, the, the C Lights films were released for trauma. Uh, like during the, uh, with, uh, brought up by Trump in the 90s and basically re released on DVD. Now, I will review LA Crackdown 2 in the future. It'll be a while before I get to that one, but. But if you want to get this, either the film Mar Movie Marathon 2 box set, or you can just find this disc, this particular copy. It's got both films on it. Now, I hope you guys are staying safe. The coronavirus is pretty much getting out of control in Victoria, and here in New South Wales, it's just starting to spike. Seriously, Danny Andrews, the Victorian Premier, Premier, really should resign. He's an idiot. Anyway, I hope you guys are staying safe. Oh, and by the way, in my in my episode description, I removed the uh, out of ten ratings, so I just put a grade and a word to meaning what it stands for, like from atrocious to awesome, whatever. You'll notice when you read the description. I don't do requests, but if you want to know if I have a particular film in my collection, just hit me up in the comments section below. Anyway, I hope you guys are staying safe, and that's it for this review.